first of all, these places that exist that, that characters in Shakespeare escape into or uh, you know, enter into are often magical places. I think Illyria uh, in Twelfth Night is even more amplified as an abstract location. And uh, I think it's important not to make it earthbound. I think if you make it earthbound and you're obedient to that kind of timeline, you're really swimming upstream. You're, you're not going with Shakespeare's current. And one of the things that I get, um, well, I guess perhaps more amused than frustrated, but there's, there's, there's often the question now, where are you going to set it? When are you going to set it? Oh, you're doing Twelfth Night, when are you going to set it? And I want to say, well, I'm going to set it now. We practice our craft in the eternal present. It's live theater. It's happening before your eyes. So certainly we can play dress up and we can pretend to be in 1900 or 1600, but at the end of the day, when we uh, you know, uh, unveil our production, it's happening in the here and now. And that's the most important thing about live theater, is it, its immediacy. Now it's interesting with Shakespeare, we have a woodcut from Titus Andronicus, and in that woodcut you get a woman in a shift you get a guy with a little Roman sword, and then behind them there's a guy who's dressed up as a beef eater. So Shakespeare was into creating a kind of period mash, and that is in fact our tradition. We have a tradition here of eclecticism, and I think one of the principles in the kind of postmodern period has been to celebrate eclecticism. You might go to have a Chinese meal, uh, you might read a 19th century French novel. Uh, you might see, uh, at the end of the day, a, a film that was made in Newfoundland. And these are the lives we lead. So the lives we lead. So, so, uh, so why should, I don't know why any of us would be uncomfortable uh, with eclecticism on the stage. That's a reflection, it seems to me, of, of the world we live in. One of the things Deb Hansen and I have been struck by is the sort of eclecticism that exists with contemporary music. Why contemporary music? Because again, we're doing the play in the here and now. And just like Shakespeare uh, would have, you know, uh, had instruments like the lute and the tabor and the, the fife, you know, period, he would have used his own period instruments regardless of the period that he was exploring. We now have you know, guitars and drums and, and as well as having those, those uh, period instruments. And so in hopefully the most uh, imaginative way, we'll be using um, uh, contemporary music as a kind of foundation, again, for this state of mind of Illyria, this world of music. So again, rather than just being uh, uh, religiously obedient and checking the size of the rough from 1609, we're creating a Shakespearean mash, very much along the lines that, that, that he would have. Some suggestion of period, at the same time, of course, for, uh, for centuries, uh, uh, up until the, uh, the 19th century, Shakespeare was performed in the, in, in contemporary, the, the clothes that were contemporary to that period. Um, so again, when we talk about tradition, we tend, I think, to be talking a little bit about convention and that's informed, it seems to me, by habit. So we want to create a world of play. That's why we call them plays. And we want to spark people's imaginations. Uh, we certainly don't want to do what, what we did uh, yesterday, or why would people come back to the theater? We want to take them on a, a, a new adventure, an adventure that I pretty much guarantee will delight them and thrill them.